This is the history of Central African Republic, the Central African Republic, presented by Wikipedia. Early history. Approximately 10,000 years ago, desertification, desertification, pardon me, off to a good start, forced hunter-gatherer societies south into the Sahel regions of northern Central Africa, where some groups settled. Farming began as part of the Neolithic Revolution. Neolithic, oh my goodness, revolution. Initial farming of white yam progressed into millet and sorghum. I don't know how these are pronounced. And before 3000 BCE, the domestication of African oil palm improved the group's nutrition and allowed for expansion of the local populations. This agricultural revolution, combined with a fish stew revolution, in which fishing began to take place, and the use of boats, allowed for the transportation of goods. Products were often moved in ceramic pots, which are the first known examples of artistic expression from the region's inhabitants. The Boer megaliths in the western region of the country indicate an advanced level of habitation dating back to the very late Neolithic era, circa 3500 to 2700 BCE. Ironworking developed in the region around 1000 BCE. The Ubangian people settled along the Ubangi River in what is today Central and East Central African Republic, while some Bantu people migrated from the southwest from Cameroon. Banan it's not a location, bananas, the fruit, arrived in the region during the first millennium BCE and added an important source of carbohydrates to the diet. They were also used in the production of alcoholic beverages. Mm. Production of copper, salt, dried fish, and textiles dominated the economic trade in the Central African region. 16th to 19th century. In the 16th and 17th centuries, slave traders began to raid the region as part of the expansion of the Saharan and Nile River slave routes. Their captives were enslaved and shipped to the Mediterranean coast, Europe, Arabia, the Western Hemisphere, or to the slave ports and factories along the West and North Africa or south along the Ubangui and Congo rivers. In the mid-19th century, the Bobangi people became major slave traders and sold their captives to the Americas using the Ubangi River to reach the coast. During the 18th century, Bandia Nazakara Azandi peoples, Bandia Naz, Naz... Yeah, we'll move on from that. Um, these people, the Azandi peoples, established the Bangaso Kingdom, Bangas, Bangaso, Bangaso, I don't know where the accent is, Kingdom along the Ubangi River. In 1875, the Sudanese Sultan, Rabi Azubair, governed the Upper Ubangui, Ubangui, which included present day Central African Republic. The French Colonial Period. The European invasion of Central African territory began in the late 19th century during the Scramble for Africa. Europeans, primarily the French, Germans, and Belgians, arrived in the area in 1885. France seized and and colonized Ubangi Shari territory in 1894. In 1911, at the Treaty of Fez, France ceded a nearly 300,000 square kilometer portion of the Sangha and Lobaye basins to the German Empire, which ceded a smaller area in present-day Chad to France. After World War I, France again annexed the territory. Modeled on King Leopold's Congo Free State, concessions were doled out to private companies that endeavored to strip the region's assets as quickly and cheaply as possible before depositing a percentage of their profits into the French treasury. The concessionary concessionary companies forced local people to harvest rubber, coffee, and other commodities without pay, and held their families hostage until they met their quotas. Pretty sucky French. Uh, French uh, history people, whatever. Um, In 1920, French Equatorial Africa was established, and Ubangi Shari was administered from Brazzaville. Brazzaville? I don't know. During the 1920s and 1930s, the French introduced a policy of mandatory cotton cultivation. A network of roads was built, attempts were made to combat sleeping sickness, 
and Protestant missions were established to spread Christianity. New forms of forced labor were also introduced, and a large number of Ubangians were sent Ubangians? I know people from Ghana are Ghanaians, not Ghanaians, so Ubangians, Ubangians, we'll say. A large number of Ubangians were sent to work on the Congo Ocean Railway. Through the period of construction until 1934, there was a continual heavy cost in human lives, with total deaths among all workers along the railway estimated in excess of 17,000 of the construction workers, from a combination of both industrial accidents and disease, including malaria. In 1928, a major insurrection, the Congo Wada Rebellion, or War of the Ho Handle, broke out in western Ubangishadi and continued for several years. The extent of this insurrection, which was perhaps the largest anti-colonial rebellion in Africa during the interwar years, was carefully hidden from the French public because it provided evidence of strong opposition to French colonial rule and forced labor. Surprising that they were opposed to forced labor. French colonialization in Obanguishadi uh, is considered to be the most brutal of the fr French colonial empire. Nice. In September 1940, during the Second World War, pro-Gallist Gal uh, French, pro French officers took control of Ubangi Shadi, and General Leclerc established his oh, sorry, and General Leclerc established his headquarters for the French pardon for the Free French Forces in Bangui. I'm not great with my alliterations. In 1946, Barthélemy Boganda was elected with 9,000 votes to the French National Assembly becoming the first representative of the Central African Republic and the French government. Boganda maintained a political stance against racism in the colonial regime, but gradually became disheartened with the French political system and returned to the Central African Republic to establish the Movement for the Social Evolution of Black Africa, or, <laughs> here's French, Mouvement pour l'évolution sociale de l'Afrique noire. I don't speak French. Uh, that happened in 1950. Since independence, or 1960 to the present day. In the Ubangi Shari Territorial Assembly election in 1957, Misan, which Misan, Misan, I'll say Misan, which is the movement for the social evolution of Black Africa. Um, Misan captured 347,000 out of the total 356,000 votes and won every legislative seat which led, to, which led to Boganda being elected president of the Grand Council of French Equatorial Africa and vice president of the Ubangi Shadi Government Council. Within a year, he declared the establishment of the Central African Republic and served as the country's first prime minister. Misan continued to exist, but its role was limited. The Central African Republic was granted autonomy within the French community on the 1st of December, 1958 a status which meant it was still counted as part of the French Empire in Africa. After Boganda's death in a plane crash on the 29th of March 1959, his cousin David Daco took control of Misan. Daco became the, became the country's first president when the Central African Republic formerly, for, formally, sorry, not former, formal, formally received independence from France at midnight on the 13th of August, 1960, a date celebrated by the country's Independence Day holiday. There we have it. The 13th of August, 1960, is CAR's Independence Day. Daco threw out his political rivals, including Abel Gomba, former prime minister and leader of Mouvement d'Evolution Démocratique de l'Afrique Centrale, which is MEDAC, which is the movement of... Uh, movement... Movement for the Democratic Evolution of the Central African Republic of the it's something like that. Um, Medak. Um, so sorry, he threw out his political rivals, including Abel Gomba, who was the former prime minister and leader of Medak, whom he forced into exile in France. With all opposition parties suppressed by November 1962, Daco declared Mason M Mason, sorry, as the official party of the state. That's nice. Bokassa in the Central African Republic, 1965 to 1979. On the 31st of December, 1965, 
Dhaka was overthrown in the saint Sylvestre coup d'état by uh, Colonel Jean Bidel Bocasa, who suspended the constitution and dissolved the National Assembly. President Bocasa declared himself president for life in 1972 and named himself Emperor Bocasa I of the Central African Republic, as the country was renamed. Um, and that happened on the 4th of December, 1976. I assume the article is saying that he named himself president for life, a.k.a. Emperor uh, Bokassa I, on the 4th of December, 1976. A year later, Emperor Bokassa crowned himself in a lavish and expensive ceremony that was ridiculed by much of the world. In April, in April 1979, young students protested against Bokasa's decree that all school pupils were required to buy uniforms from a company owned by one <laughs> by a company owned by one of his wives. Okay, uh, <laughs> it's just so blatant. Uh, the government violently suppressed the protests. Oh shit! Okay, um, killing a hundred children and teenagers. That sucks. Bokasa might have been personally involved in some of the killings. Stand up guy here. In September 1979, France overthrew Bokasa and restored Dako to power, subsequently restoring the official name of the country and the original government to the Central African Republic. Dako, in turn, was again overthrown in a coup by General André Kolingba on the 1st of September 1981. Not a great going here. Central African Republic under Kulingba, which, again, was 1981. And this was overthrowing Dako, who was put in by France. Okay. Kulingba suspended the constitution and ruled with the military junta. Is it junta or junta? I don't actually know. Uh, until 1985. Ruled with this military force until 1985. He introduced a new constitution in 1986, which was adopted by a nationwide referendum. Membership in his new party, the, <laughs> the Rassemblement, Rassemblement, Assemble, Assemblement? The Rassemblement, de, okay, it's French. The Rassemblement Démocratique Centrafricain. That was terrible. Um, Anyway, membership in his new party, the RDC, was voluntary. In 1987 and 1988, semi-free elections to parliament were held, but Kalingba's two major political opponents, Abel Gomba and Ange Philippe Patassé, were not allowed to participate. Ange Philippe Patassé has an interesting uh, history. We'll, we'll see that too. By 1990, inspired by the fall of the Berlin Wall, a pro-democracy movement arose. Pressure from the United States, France, and from, and from a group of locally represented countries and agencies called GIBAFOR, G-I-B-A-F-O-R, uh, which is France, the U.S., Germany, Japan, the EU, the World Bank, and the UN, GIBAFOR, finally led Kalingba to agree to, uh, sorry, finally led Kalingba to agree in principle, to hold free elections in October 1992 with help from the UN Official of Electoral Affairs. After using the excuse of alleged irregularities to suspend the results of the elections as a pretext for holding on to power, President Kalingba came under intense pressure from Guy before to establish a Conseil National... Uh, okay, I'll just say it like a, uh, like a, a American. To establish a Consul National... Politique, no, I actually like that worse. Conseil national politique provisoire de la République. Oh, which it gives here in English. Provisional National Political Council, which is abbreviated as CNPPR. PP. And to set up, so uh, pressure from Guy before to establish this Provisional National Political Council, CNPPR, and to set up a mixed electoral commission which included representatives from all political parties. When a second round of elections were finally held in 1993, again with the help of the international community coordinated by Gibefor, Ange Philippe Patassé won in the second round of voting with 53% of the vote, while Gomba won 45.6%. 
Pathesis Party, the Movement pour la Libération des Peuples Centrafricains, uh, which sounds like, oh, it gives it in English in just a second. Uh, the Movement for the Liberation of the Central African People, which is MLPC, Movement for the Liberation of Central African People. Pathesis Party. Uh, it gained a plurality, relative majority, but not an absolute majority of seats in parliament, which meant Pathesis Party required coalition partners. Pathesis government, 1993 to 2003, 10 years. Pathesis purged many of the Kalingpa elements from the government, and Kalingpa supporters accused Pathesis government of conducting a witch hunt against the Yakoma. Yakoma? I don't know. A new constitution was approved on the 28th of December, 1994, but had little impact on the country's politics. In 1996 to 1997, reflecting steadily decreasing public confidence in the, in the government's erratic behavior, three mutinies against Patase's administration were accompanied by widespread destruction of property and heightened ethnic tension. During this time, 1996, the Peace Corps evacuated all its volunteers to neighboring Cameroon. To date, the Peace Corps has not returned to the Central African Republic. The Bangui Agreements, signed in January 1997, provided for the deployment of an inter-African military mission to the Central African Republic and re-entry of ex-mutineers into the government on the 7th of April, pardon me, 1997. The Inter-African Military Mission was later replaced by a UN peacekeeping force, MINURCA, MINURCA, that's an acronym, um, this uh, peacekeeping force from the UN. Since 1997, the country has hosted almost a dozen peacekeeping interventions, earning it the title of World Champion of Peacekeeping. Nice. In 1998, parliamentary elections resulted in Kalingpa's RDC winning 20 out of 109 seats. The next year, however, in spite of widespread public anger in urban centers over his corrupt rule, Patase won a second term in the presidential election. Widespread public anger in urban centers over his corrupt rule, Patase. Okay, so apparently he was corrupt, Patase. They, they're not doing great with having good leaders here. It's unfortunate. Um, on the 28th of May, 2001, Rebels stormed strategic buildings in Bangui, which Bangui is the uh, capital, um, by the way. Uh, Rebels stormed strategic buildings in Bangui in an unsuccessful coup attempt. The Army Chief of Staff, Ab Abel Abro, and General Francois de Jader Bedaya, that's a hard one. Mm, how's that? Jader? Jader? I don't know. Uh, General Francois Njader Padaya were killed, um, but Patase regained the upper hand by bringing in at least 300 troops of the Congolese rebel leader Jean-Pierre Bemba and Libyan soldiers. In the aftermath of the failed coup, militias loyal to Patase sought revenge against rebels in many neighborhoods of Bangui and incited unrest, including the murder of many political opponents. Eventually, Patase came to suspect the General Francois Bozizé Bozizé, Francois Bozizé, uh, Patassé suspected that he was involved in another coup attempt against him, which led Bozizé to flee with loyal troops to Chad. In March 2003, Bozizé launched a surprise attack against Patassé, who was out of the country. Um, sorry, that's the end of the sentence. Who was out of the country. Libyan troops and some 1,000 soldiers of Bemba's Congolese rebel organization failed to stop the rebels, and Bozizé's forces succeeded in overthrowing Patassé. François Bozizé, uh, sorry, uh, new subtitle, Civil Wars. François Bozizé suspended the constitution, there's a lot of suspending this constitution, and named a new cabinet, which, in, which included most opposition parties. Included most opposition parties. Okay. Abel Gomba was named vice president, which gave Bozizé's new government a positive is image. Bozizé established a broad-based national transition council to draft a new constitution and announced that he would step down and run for office once the new constitution was approved. 
Sounds like this guy's off to a good start. Um, yeah. In 2004, the Central African Republic Bush War began. 2004, Central African Republic Bush War uh, began as forces opposed to Bozizé took up arms against his government. In May 2005, Bozizé won the presidential election, which excluded Patase, and in 2006, fighting continued between the government and the rebels. In November 2006, Bozizé's government requested French military support to help them repel rebels who had taken control of towns in the country's northern regions. Though the initial public details of the agreement pertained to logistics and intelligence, by December, the French assistance included airstrikes by uh, Dassault Mirage 2000 fighters against rebel positions. Do we have a picture? Yep, there is that plane. Look at that plane. Oh, you know I can show pictures of uh, Bozizé. That's Bozizé. Abel Gomba. That's not a great picture. And here, rebel militia in the northern countryside in 2007. I'm not going to lie. He looks pretty freaking cool. I don't know what is going on in the background, though. I don't know if these people are in trouble. Or what. I don't know if they support this. I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. The Sirte? Sirte? Or Sirte? I don't know. The Sirte Agreement in February and the Birao Peace Agreement in April 2007 called for a cessation of hostilities. The billeting, I don't know if that's how you say that. Okay of FDPC fighters and their integration with FACA, the liberation of political, this is a lot of acronyms, the billeting of FDPC, the Democratic Front of the Central African Republic. Okay, the billeting of FDPC fighters and their integration with FACA, the liberation of political prisoners, integration of FDPC into government and amnesty for the UFDR, its recognition as a political party, and the integration of its fighters into the National Army. That one is a lot. What is the UFDR? Union of Democratic Forces for Unity. Look at that dude with his cool hat. Right on. Um, so integration of its fighters into the National Army. Several groups continued to fight, but other groups signed on to the agreement or similar agreements with the government, for example, UFR on the 15th of December 2008. The only major group not to sign an agreement at the time was the CPJP, which continued its activities and signed a peace agreement with the government on the 25th of August 2012. CPJP is the Convention of Patriots for Justice and Peace, rebel group in CAR, which was involved in the fighting. Okay. In 2011, Bozizé was re-elected in an election which was widely considered fraudulent. In November 2012, Seleka, which is CPSK, CPJP, UFDR. Okay, Seleka is an alliance of rebel militia groups. Wonderful. Um... In November 2012, Seleka, a coalition of rebel groups, took over towns in the northern and central regions of the country. These groups eventually reached a peace deal with the, Bo with the Bozizé's government in January 2013, involving a power-sharing government. But this deal broke down and the rebels seized the capital in March 2013, and Bozizé fled the country. Michael Jotodia, we're going to say that. Michael Jotodia, you can see what he looks like here. There we are, handsome man. Michael Jotodia took over as president. Prime Minister Nicolas Tiangaye requested a UN peacekeeping force from the UN Security Council. And on the 31st of May, former President Bozizé was indict indicted for crimes against humanity and incitement of genocide. Darn. Um, by the end of the year, there were, there were international warnings of a genocide, and fighting was largely from reprisal attacks on civilians from Seleka's predominantly Muslim fighters and Christian militias called Anti-Balaka. Balaka. What's that mean? Anti-Balaka is an alliance of militia groups, okay, um, composed primarily 
of Christians. However, some church leaders have con- contested the claimed exclusivity Christian character of such groups. Okay, so Selica, predominantly Muslim, and Christian uh, militias were anti-Balaka. By August 2013, there were reports of over 200,000 internally displaced persons, IDPs. French President François, don't you love my French? François Hollande, Hollande, I don't know. I don't, I don't speak French, don't care about it. Uh, this guy, <laughs> Frankie Holland, uh, French president, called on the UN Security Council and African Union to increase their efforts to stabilize the country. On the 18th of February, 2014, United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, Ban Ki-moon, that guy, Secretary General of the UN Ban Ki-moon called on the UN Security Council to immediately deploy 3,000 troops to the country, bolstering the 6,000 African Union soldiers and 2,000 French troops already in the country to combat civilians being murdered in large numbers. The Selica government was said to be divided, and in September 2013, Chotodia officially disbanded Selica, but many re- rebels refused to disarm, becoming known as ex Selica, and veered further out of government control. One second. It is argued that the focus of the initial disarm- disarmament efforts, sorry. It is argued that the focus of the initial disarmament efforts exclusively on the Selica inadvertently handed the the anti-Balaka, so disarmament efforts on the Muslim group, handed the Christian group the upper hand, leading to forced displacement of Muslim civilians by anti-Balaka in Bangui in Western Central African Republic. Good, good, good. On Jan, on sorry, on the 11th of January, 2014, Michael Jotodia and Nicholas Tiangaye resigned as part of a deal negotiated at a regional summit in neighboring Chad. Catherine Samba Panza was elected as interim president by the National Transitional Council, becoming the first ever female Central Africa African re, uh, sorry, first ever female Central African president. On the 23rd of July, 2014. Following Congolese mediation efforts, Seleka and Antibalaka representatives signed a ceasefire agreement in Brazzaville. By the end of 2014, the country was de facto partitioned with the Antibalaka in the southwest and ex Seleka in the northeast. In March 2015, Samantha Power, blue text, that's Samantha Power, journalist, here's uh, Catherine Sampapanza. Oh, and you know where's Brazzaville? Look at that little metropolis. Is that the right word? Probably not. Anyway, um, in March 2015, Samantha Power, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, said 417 out of the country's 436 mosques had been destroyed, and the Muslim women were so scared of going out in public, they were giving birth in their homes instead of going to the hospital. On the 14th of December 2015, Selica rebels, uh, sorry, Selica rebel leaders declared an independent Republic of Logon. L- Lagone? Logone? I don't know what it is. Republic of Logon, also known as Dar al-Kuti. Dar al-Kuti. So that was the Muslim leaders declaring this republic. It's a pretty flag. I like those colors. Okay. Uh, Toadera, 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 we'll say that, Toadera government from 2016 to the present. Presidential elections were held in December 2015. As no candidate received more than 50% of the vote, a second round of elections was held on the 14th of February 2016, with runoffs on the 31st of March 2016. In the second round of voting, former Prime Minister Faustine Arshange to- Toadera, sorry, Toadera, was declared the winner with 63% of the vote, defeating Union for Central African Renewal candidate Aniset Georges Dologole, do, that's like do, uh, dialogue lay, I don't know, do, Dologole, <laughs> I keep saying it like a question, Dologole, um, he was a candidate for the Union for Central African Renewal. Uh, another former prime minister. 
While the election suffered from many potential voters being absent as they had taken refuge in in other countries, the fears of widespread violence were ultimately unfounded and the African Union regarded the elections as successful. Toadera was sworn in on the 30th of March, 2016. No representatives of the, Sel- of the Selica rebel group or the anti-Balaka militias were included in the subsequently formed government. A- after the end of Toadera's first term, presidential elections were held on the 27th of December, 2020, with a possible second round planned for the 14th of February, 2021. Former President Francois Bozizet announced his candidacy on the 25th of July, 2020, but was rejected by the Constitutional Court of the country, which held that Bozizet did not satisfy the good morality requirement for candidates because of an, in, because of an international warrant in the United Nations sanctions against him for alleged assassinations, tortures, and other crimes. Fair enough. That sounds like he does not satisfy good morality. Um, as large parts of the country were at the time controlled by armed groups, the election could not be conducted in many areas of the country. Some 800 of the country's polling stations, 14% of the total, were closed due to violence. Three Burundian, Burundian, they've got a cool flag there, I wonder if it'll show it. Yeah, look at that, that, uh, that flag. Uh, three Burundian peacekeepers were killed, and an additional two were wounded during the run-up to the election. President Faustin Ashanj Toadera was, a, was re-elected in the first round of the election in December 2020. Oh, Russian mercenaries from the Wagner Group have supported President Faustin Ashanj Toadera in the fight against rebels. Russian's Wagner Group has been accused of harassing and intimidating civilians. In December 2022, Roger Cohen wrote in the New York Times, Wagner shocked, Wagner shocked troops from a Praetorian Guard for Mr. Toadera, who is also protected by Rwandan forces, in return for an untaxed license to exploit and export the Central African Republic's resources. And one Western ambassador called the Central African Republic a vassal state of the Kremlin. On the 8th of September, 2023, a United Nations-backed court in the Central African Republic charged ex-rebel leader Abdoulaye Abdoulaye Hissene for alleged crimes against humanity and war crimes. This guy. Current military situation in Central African Republic. So we've got the big red dots, our government and allies. And this is as of the 24th of November, 2023. The capital, Bangwe, here. Here's the Christian group, Antibalaka. Azande, I remember reading at some point. I don't remember what they are. Park Rangers. That means nothing to me. Um... Yeah, interesting. Well, that is the Central African Republic history as presented by Wikipedia. Thank you.